I have grown to hate working the late shift at this place. As you would probably expect, that's when all the weirdest things that exist here seem to make themselves known. The other day it was about an hour before close, and Brandy went outside to take a smoke break, which generally meant I wouldn't see her for at least another half hour. I still hadn't met Rick, the store manager, in person. We'd spoken a few times over video chat, but he claimed he was on some sort of extended leave. In fact, he seemed terrified every time I mentioned the idea of coming back. Can't say I blame him. Anyways, I was bored as hell that night and probably hadn't seen a customer in about 45 minutes. Brandy didn't want me to explore when she was there, because then she said that she'd be overwhelmed. So, this was the perfect time to do it. I walked out into the hallway and started looking around. That was when I noticed one of those white service doors that you see in malls. The ones that lead to a back hallway where the bathrooms are. Curious, I walked over to it and opened the door. Oddly though, it opened to just a stairway leading down into the depths. There was a door down there that, when I checked it out, I could hear noise coming from the other side. I put my ear up to it and realized it was people chatting. I was dumbfounded. At that time of night, in this mall, just didn't make any sense. I tried opening it, but the door was locked. Extremely curious, I even started trying to force the door open, but that didn't work either. Then a voice beckoned down the stairway. What the heck are you doing, man? I looked up to see Brandy staring down from the top of the stairs. She seemed mildly annoyed at me for leaving the store and asked me to come back up. I couldn't get the thought of those people out of my head, though. What could they possibly have been doing in the basement of an abandoned mall? I thought about it for days, and eventually knew that I had to get down there. But I had no idea how, so I basically just forgot about it, for a while at least. That was until on my way out one night, I heard something shuffling across the floor, down the hallway behind me. Looking back, there was a shadow of something tiny standing only a couple feet above the ground. It shuffled around repetitively, jostling its body back and forth like a robot. Then as I focused closer, I realized, to my horror, it was a doll with black eyes and frizzy hair, its face all cracked and gray. It just paced back and forth as if in some repetitive loop. I froze in a panic as I heard the sounds of several other small footsteps clambering around in a different hallway as well. I ran in the direction of my car, then around a corner I heard this blaring siren that almost knocked me off of my feet, followed by the sounds of dolls scattering down the hallway. Out from around the corner rolled a small janitor cart filled with mops and brooms. The guy pushing it was an older man with one of those ponytails and a bald spot on the back of his head. That'll take care of them for a little while, at least till they regroup, the man said as he pulled out a tobacco pipe. I kneeled down, my hands on my knees, trying to catch my breath. I didn't think you were allowed to smoke in here, I said, breathing heavily. You ain't, but it helps when you've been here longer than the rules have, he said as he took a huge draw from his pipe. He turned and walked away, and I saw the little siren he had hanging from his side. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It looked high-tech, but instead of being built with traditional components, it had these quartz-like stones attached to it. I figured I'd give it a shot and ask him if he knew who the people were that I'd heard in the basement the other day. He then paused for a moment, eventually smirking and letting out a chuckle. He then discreetly pulled out something from his pocket and shook my hand, sliding me a key. I wouldn't recommend you go in there too long, otherwise the bosses may start to notice, he said as he pointed up to a camera in one of the corners of the hallway. Brimming with questions I just had to ask, what is up with this place, man? Again he just smirked and pointed up at the camera before his radio and his belt beeped and emitted a deep inaudible voice. Well, I better be going. You watch yourself in there, okay? He said as he began to push away. I couldn't help myself. 
I had to go there immediately. After I walked down the stairs, I pulled out the key and unlocked it. Strangely though, it just led to another door across from it and another stairway. When I looked up the stairs, I saw another door just like the one from my side. But this one I could hear people, tons of them walking around. I walked up the stairs and when I opened it, I was amazed to see that the mall looked brand new. It was also completely packed. The Spencer's Gifts was still in the same spot, but it looked newer too. Then I noticed the posters in the windows were bands from the early 90s. Amazed, I strode into the store. At the register, there was a young, scrawny guy dealing with a customer with a grungy flannel and long hair. I read the young clerk's name tag, and it said, Rick. I stared at him in awe until he looked up at me and I averted my glance. I knew that I must have somehow gone through a time rift or something. Either that or this was the most elaborate workplace prank I'd ever seen. Stepping out from the store, I gazed out into the crowd of people, noticing they were all dressed in 90s attire as well. All except for this figure I saw come around the corner. It was a 15 foot tall man in a suit, just standing in the middle of the crowd. People walked around him as if they didn't even notice. Then his long legs extended as he began to march down the hallway towards me. Panicked, I ran back to the service door and down the stairs, the man's arm stretching out and grabbing me before I could go down. Before he could pull me back though, a small boy jumped out and bit him on the arm. I was then able to shake away and run down the stairs. I opened the door at the bottom and slammed it shut, holding the knob closed. You can't get through now. I turned and saw that same homeless man from my documentation in the past. He stood up on the stairway, hyper-focused on me. Was there a little boy in a red and blue shirt? He asked aggressively. What the hell was that thing? I yelled. One of the guards. They don't want you going over to the other side. Did you see that little boy? I took a deep breath. I did. He helped me get out, but I think that thing got him. This hit the man like a ton of bricks. Tears came to his eyes and he sat down on the stairs. I thought my son had gotten lost in here 25 years ago and I came through looking for him. I guess it wasn't him. I think I saw him last time I saw you, I said confidently. That was one of them. Each place you go, it's got its own guards, its own distractions, reasons to both leave and stay. They can fool you into making a mistake. What is this mall? I asked, fed up with all this beating around the bush. He looked around before answering. I don't think any of us really knows, but if you ask me, it's some kind of game, one that I probably lost. As soon as he said that, the door from above flew open and several of the dolls flew on top of us, biting and tearing at his neck. Before I could react, he had lost tons of blood and fell to the ground. Then the dolls systematically arranged themselves around him and dragged his body toward the door. One reached up to open it and pulled him through to the other side. Then they just let me go. I bolted up the stairs as fast as I could and down the hall, where I saw a number of other dolls standing there, just watching me, as if ushering a warning. I ignored them and headed out to the parking lot. Exhausted from the events, I got to my car and pulled out my key. In the corner of my eye, I saw the two wide-eyed men standing there in the parking lot, staring at me. Angry, I yelled to them, asking how much longer I'd have to do this. But the two men both just pointed up to the sky above, towards a pill-shaped object floating near the clouds. They then turned and walked away into the darkness. After tonight, I truly know what the stakes of this place are, and 
I feel that if I'm going to make it through, I need to get better at playing the game. Because my next encounter might not be so lucky.